You really mustn't creep up on people like that. Well, yes, I suppose I am. Dr. Weston Lesko's my name, and it's good to make your acquaintance. What brings you to my little experimental ecosystem? My experiments are of a complex nature and would take a scientist to... My foray into reducing the girth of these insectoid creatures is of utmost importance. I intend to generationally reduce their immense stature by way of a pre-birth induced mutagen. My word, you understand perfectly. How marvelous! Well, this is rather embarrassing, so you'll have to forgive me, but it appears that I've made a slight miscalculation in my mutagen samples. Instead of lowering the size of the ants, the brood hatched and developed a, a new... I call their genetic aberration pyrosis, the ability to emit flame from their bodies. I may be able to correct this error, but I can't get near my equipment. Your knowledge of experimental procedure surprises me. Indeed, I have skipped a step and directly modified an entire brood. Perhaps I was too hasty. I was so certain it would work. To correct this mistake, I'll need to get to my terminal to modify the mutagen. My portable terminal is set up in the hatchery chamber near the Ant Queen. If I can reach it, I can continue to work on improving the mutagen. If she were harmed in any way, months of data would be lost. Your objective would be to eliminate what I call her quintet of nest guardians. Filthy little abominations. I've rigged the equipment at my portable terminal to emit what I call an inhibitor pulse. Once I send this pulse, all of the remaining ants will lose their empathic link with the queen and frenzy destroying each other in the process. So that's all there is to it. What do you say? Why can't man follow the ants' example? They work together as a team. They require... But I digress. I've managed to isolate some of the fire ant genes and distill them into human-safe genetic enhancers. I can inject you with one of these formulas and you'll find yourself with either enhanced strength or enhanced perception. Not only that, but you'll be somewhat more resistant to fire. You will? Be careful, my friend. The Far too curious. His incessant questioning would often come when I was... He had no... Re all scientists take responsibility for their failures because it comes with the territory. I will take this experimentation to completion without roosting on the moral high ground. If I allow emotions to enter the mix, all this time and energy spent will have been for nothing. You have your ideals and I have mine. I'm down here to complete my experiments at any cost. If that means the loss of a few lives to save generations of lives in the future, it's a small price to pay. I can't risk leaving this place. I have to continue monitoring the hatchery. I have no time for children. Well, the mutagen has enhanced their fortitude and provided them with what I call pyrosis, the ability to emit flame biologically. They're quite radiation-free, however. Well, as radiation-free as any other mutated creature in the wasteland. 
playing with genetic codes isn't simple. Do you realize one tiny tweak at any point in the last million years could have completely changed us? Going from attempting to change their size to generating their pyrosis ability is no surprise. I'm afraid they are not susceptible to anything I can think of that wouldn't harm the garden variety giant ant. Just aim for their antennae if you can. It, it will confuse them quite a bit. The stimulation of the subject's evolutionary trigger by the mutagen caused a biodefensive reaction metamorphosing the ant's venom glands. This process caused unexpected oscillations in the venom molecules at such a vast rate it produces a thermodynamic biochemical reaction. As the subject ejects the volatile solution, it becomes conflagrant due to new structures in its maw I call its calefaction array. Amazing, isn't it? Please don't insult my in now. Thank you.
I've detected some changes within the Queen's hatchery with my equipment. What's transpired? Oh, there are many that say it can't be done. By introducing my mutagen directly into an ant, this is in... Destroy? Oh, no, no, no! You mustn't do that. It's my life's work. Just clear me a path to my equipment and I'll do the rest when you tell me it's safe. Oh, how marvelous. Please, tell me what happened. Come now, the faster you tell me... Then I will proceed to my portable terminal at once and make the necessary changes to the formula. Thanks very much for everything. You've been quite a useful lab assistant. You should take him away from this place. It would be... Well, I will... Until then, I will be staying in my shack. How marvelous! A witch injection... How mar... All of a sudden, the ants went nuts and started fighting each other. It was like they were totally crazy. It was really scary, but kind of cool at the same time. You know what I mean? I wish I had something to give you for all the work you did, but I never really had much to start with. 
I guess now you'll be on your way, and I'll have to try living here by myself. Hope you'll come back and visit someday. Really? You mean it? Oh boy, thank you so much. I'll wait in my old house. Just don't forget about it. Well, Papa always told me about my cousin Vera. She lives in some big giant ship somewhere or something. Papa called the place Rivet City, but I don't know where it is. I wish you could stay here with me in Grey Ditch. So, are they intelligent? Do they... I'll bet most people would have just gone in there, guns blazing without half a thought. I've been getting a good signal, but what do you think about them from your first-hand observations of them? scientific of you. Personally, I wasn't sure if they were crabs or if they came from some sort of brine shrimp wraps. Some of these observations about their armor and camouflage gave me an idea for reinforced neutral colored headgear. Here, consider it thanks for not interfering with them. Correct as always. And your feedbacks really led to a very smartly written book. Maybe too smart for some folks, I worry. Of course, if the reader can't be bothered to understand something important as a book on how to stay alive, then what can we do, huh? And in case those readers blame you for their ignorance, here's your payment. Two big boxes of ammo. Now, on to the next chapter. The last chapter is a bit more esoteric. It's about the survival of humanity as a whole and how to rebuild society. Deep stuff, huh? We need to know how large settlements are formed, how to harness the old technology, and I'll need you to get ancient history from a nearby library. We're in the last stretch now, so let's finish it up strong. What's first? Don't be so sure. You'd be surprised how confused people get, even about important things. In this case, I'm talking about Rivet City. It's the most successful survivor settlement around, but no one here really knows how it started. Of course, that's why it's important to know how a place like that succeeded. So I need you to go there and do some researching. Oh, now I can't wait for what you find out down there. And check around to make sure you're hearing the real deal. Why, I'm flattered. Well, look around at the world we live in. It may be okay to you, but I've read about what it used to be like. 
So we all need something that keeps us going. No, it, it's like... Uh, did you ever try to put a broken piece of glass back together? Even if the pieces fit, you can't make it whole again the way it was. But if you're clever, you can still use the pieces to make other useful things. Well, the world broke just like the glass. And everyone's trying to put it back together like it was. But it'll never come together the same way. What, helping the trade caravans with idiotic chores? Repairing carts and fixing up sick Brahmin? There's got to be something more worthwhile that I can do to help humanity. Really? You really mean that? You think my book really could... Well, then... Now, let's get... Unless it's... Any luck finding out how
good hunting.